Hey guys, Agami here, and in this video, I want to be talking about the best FPS game you'll ever play, Ultra Kill. But before we get into it, and I know y'all are going to be annoyed, but still, only 0.7% of my viewers are actually subscribed, and if all, all you just hit the subscribe button, not only will it motivate me to make good videos, it will also help me to get to my lifelong dream of being a, a gaming YouTuber. Now back to the video. So yeah, this is actually the best FPS game ever. You dumbasses out there might say, What the hell is this shitty ass game? Well, with that I say, You shut your fucking useless, homeless, adopted, league player ass before I fucking sm- <clears throat> Sorry about that. Some of you are probably just saying, This looks like a ripoff of Doom, but really, This game is actually about 7% better than Doom, according to the Steam reviews. And as someone who's actually played Doom Eternal myself, I can confirm this game is 100% better than Doom. And my main complaint about Doom is just, one, the game is too damn slow to be a fast-paced shooter. Like, well, seriously, what the fuck is this? Fear not. It's all part of the plan. Ultra Kill is way faster. Two, Doom Guy has the worst reason to commit Demon to the site. Bro, he's a fucking rabbit. Three, the soundtrack. Mick Gordon just does heavy metal rock. Like, MF, I don't want to hear a horror game soundtrack with an occasional electric guitar to blow your eardrums into a multiverse. I want to hear a variety, like one minute you're listening to break core, put in a microwave on power 10, the next you're listening to... Literally, those were actually the themes for 1-2 and 1-3 respectively. Four, you don't actually have to do some arbitrary ass gimmick to be a boss. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Some dudes straight up killed Gabriel, the final boss of the, the game, in 3-2, by beating the shit out of the coin. Machine, turn back now. The layers of this palace are not for your kind. Turn back, or your choice is made. As the righteous hand of the Father, But enough introduction. The enemies in Ultra Kill are pretty simple. There are some melee enemies like the Filth, which are just bullet fodder, and then you have mostly projectile enemies. According to the wiki, there are four types of enemies. Husks, demons, machines, and angels. The husks are enemies like Filth, Strays, and Schisms. Filth are the weakest, and they have half a point of health, which isn't a lot, but damage is measured in small numbers. The revolver only does one point of damage, but the coins can deal so much fucking damage! No, that's a lot of damage! Sorry, I got sidetracked. Anyways, demons are enemies like Cerberus and Reese. They have a bit of health, and they're first introduced as bosses, and they're fu FUCKING BALL- <laughs> Next up are machines, like you. Machines are enemies like drones, street cleaners, and sentries. <clears throat> Sorry, wrong sentry. Drones are these purple things that shoot you, and when you kill them, they become a Japanese kamikaze jet and explode while flying at you. Street cleaners burn shit, deflect rockets, <laughs> and dodge slow attacks like shotguns and nail guns. Sentries plant themselves into the ground while charging a laser that deals a, a lot of damage. Oh my god! But takes a lot of time and aren't real threats if you take them out in time. Finally, we have biblically accurate angels, and Behold! there are also bosses, but not for now. The weapons are the best part of the game. First up is the revolver, which is, well, 
are evolving. This means it's cool as fuck, as well as the two variations being Piercer, which fires a shot that pierces through small enemies and deals multiple hits to big enemies, like the Risk of Rain 2 Colony. The other variant is the best gun ever made in video game. It sounds ridiculous, but it hits like a wrath of God. So what the fuck is it, you may be asking me? Well, coins of course. You can throw a coin in the air, then shoot it to deal more damage. You may be saying it's not that big of a deal, but remember, you can also punch coins as well. This shreds through health bars in a matter of seconds, but you get in order to deal maximum damage, you've got to punch a coin ten times, dead coin it five times, which is where you throw a coin up in the air and then just shoot it instantly, and then you shoot it with a rail cannon. So it's pretty damn OP. Next is the shotgun. To make the first variant, Hakita took some Breaking Bad blue math, then said, I love shotguns and I love grenade launchers. What if I made a shotgun that was a grenade launcher? And then mm, the best uh, shotgun ever made was created. Basically, there is a Corject feature on the first shotgun, which lets you right click and you can shoot a grenade. There's also a pump charge, which is the other variant, which lets you shoot more pellets and you can over pump it, which makes an explosion come out of the barrel. I also like to take a minute to mention the parry mechanic, which lets you punch projectiles with a feedbacker arm to send them flying back at the enemy. The shotgun pellets are actually classified as projectiles, meaning that you can punch them and, well, it speaks for itself, really. Next we have the nail gun, a full auto minigun that shoots nails. The introduction is pretty straightforward. So yeah, it can shred enemies, but the alt fire sends out an attractor, which you can shoot on the ground at the intro of the boss, then shoot to explode it, making it do shit tons of damage. The fourth weapon is the real cannon. You might use this to cut off a portion of the boss's health bar, but you can also change this with some coins to make it deal ungodly amounts of damage. It also pierces with the electric fans. There's also a screwdriver variant, which you can use to chip off lots of health, and a malicious variant, which can explode on impact. The fifth and final so far weapon is the rocket launcher. With the rocket launcher, you can rocket pogo like in TF2, as well as rocket riding like in Fortnite. You can direct hit an enemy with the rocket launcher and make them explode, or you can launch them into the air and then shoot them with another rocket, causing them to have a bigger explosion. Another thing is that the rocket launcher has a freeze frame ability, which lets you freeze the rocket midair by letting you rocket ride it. The new variant that released it while I was making the video was the SRS cannon, which lets you charge up it and right click, which will eat a cannonball out of the barrel. I swear, Hakita's a genius, and it comes from crack. There are lots of amazing combos you can do and weapons for me. I'll put some more footage I stole of good players and cool combos here. That was some footage from the Ultra Kill Colliding Stars Community Combo Mad. I'll leave the link in the description for that. Some of the easier combos to perform would be yeeting three or four coins in the air and swapping to your rail cannon to perform a triple slash quadruple rail coin. You can also use the malicious variant of the rail cannon, which explodes on impact, combined with a rocket or core jet to do a core nuke. You can also do a smaller version called a core snipe by using a revolver shot instead of a rail cannon. There's also a sawblade variant of the nail gun I forgot to mention, which you can use to do a combo called, and I am not joking, this is the actual term, a saw con. Basically, you set up a normal nail bomb, but with saw blade instead, and then you shoot it. I don't really understand it because the video I watched kept lagging. I ain't got much else to say.
there are quite a few bosses in Ultra Kill. There is usually a boss on the second or third level of a layer, and then another boss on the last level of the layer. The few exceptions is our 3-2 and 6-2, where you fight Gabriel, as well as there only being one boss on there too. The first actual boss of the game is Sword Machine. The Sword Machine is shown in a few parts of 0-2, as well as a secret encounter where you can get the shotgun early. In one of the rooms in 0-3, you encounter the Sword Machine, which carries both a sword and a shotgun. It's kind of like how I play Blade and Sorcery, you know? You can carry the sword and the shotgun, and when you deplete its first health bar, it runs away like a little bitch, dropping its shotgun in the process. You do eventually go back to another room and end the level, and kill it, ending the level. The second boss of the game is in 1-3, where you fight the hideous ass, I mean mass. It's basically just a giant lobster, which was put into a shell with a ton of demonic energy, so much that it overflowed the shell, and now it's extremely hard to fight. It can also send out shock waves, which are annoying as fuck, as well as shooting out a hook, which can keep you on the ground, and explosive balls, which I haven't tried peering them, but I'm pretty sure you can. There's also soap somewhere in the level, which you can use to insta-kill it. We finally get on to the third boss of the game. This boss is the first boss in the game so far that is not used as a normal enemy. In 1-4 you encounter V2, which is just you, but better. V2 is a version of V1 with more health, it heals at a safe distance, and it has the Knuckle Blaster. In this way, V2 can lend V1 a hand, literally. But all jokes aside, to get to the next level, you have to grab the Knuckle Blaster for the elevator to open. There's not much more explaining to do, but the Knuckle Blaster cannot parry and it punches slower. That being said, to replace the slower attack speed, you hit like a 4 F250, and to replace parrying, you can hold down the melee button to send out a shockwave. Yes, the Knuckle Blaster is a shotgun fist. Next, in 2-4, we have the Corpse of King Minos, aka... Basically, you can parry his fist. He can also spawn in a black hole to prevent you from standing in one spot, as well as in his second phase, shoot projectiles from his eyeballs. In order to get to layer 3, you have to enter his stomach, which is why 3-1 is called the Belly of the Beast. The next boss is Gabriel, voiced by the funny man himself, Gianni Matragano. Gabriel has a very diverse moveset, as he can slice you with the sword, throw an exploding parryable sword at you, and also teleport above you and slam down with a spear. He does occasionally stop to mock you, which you can use to heal, but it is a very fucking hard fight. The next boss is on 4-2, which is the Insurrectionist. I say the whole name, but I can't pronounce it. He has a very stretched rubber band arm, because his other arm and his head are missing, and he has a Maurice in that rubber band arm. The Maurice can be parried with good timing, but if you don't have good timing, then he's gonna crush you. The next boss is V2 again. After running away, he got a new arm, and he learned how to throw and shoot coins. He can also shoot out some nails of his own, and you can also steal his arm again. When V2 throws a coin and is about to shoot it, it'll have a red spark, which means that you can shoot it back at him, getting you the counter ricochet style bonus. After getting his first health bar off, he will break out of the pyramid, in which you will chase him, and then he falls on the ground and dies, this time for real. After that, you can steal his arm, which is the Whiplash. The Whiplash functions as this game's uh, grappling hook, and is really well done, as instead of uh, grappling onto surfaces, you grapple onto hook points and enemies. Another thing about the grappling hook is that it deals 0.2 points of damage, meaning that with enough it hits, you can kill an enemy with the grappling hook. And something that Kida should not have added is that hard damage is on the grappling hook, so every time you use it, any missing health you have up to 50 will be turned into hard damage while you're using it. Next boss is on 5-2. We got the Freyman, a husk that control thunder and is very agile. The cool gimmick about this fight is they can also not fight him. What I mean by this is that you can throw a coin to him and he will let you pass. In 5-4, you fight the Leviathan, a huge fucking fish. Its attacks include a barrage of skull projectiles, swinging its tail, and an unparryable charge. He has a weak point, which is a heart on the top of his head, and you can shoot it for three times as much damage. The final boss of the game so far is a second Gabriel encounter, as this time he's back and he's fucking pissed. He starts the fight enraged, and then after deleting his first health bar, he'll become unenraged, which is somehow harder. Enough said. There are also two secret bosses which are in Prime Sanctums. P-1 is the Minus Prime boss fight. 
you start off fighting the Flesh Prison, a giant spinning rotated cube, and then after you beat it, Minos' soul will drop to the ground after you kill the cube. He will begin a spine-chilling monologue before kicking your shit in, and even though he's tough as nails to beat, people still somehow manage to P-rank him without taking damage and without breaking a sweat. The other Prime Sanctum, P-2, is a combination of 6-1, Flesh Prison, and Minos on 15 different types of steroids and crack. Once you get past the insanely hard gauntlets with lots of enemy spawns, you have to then fight the Flesh Panopticon, which the Panopticon is just Flesh Prison on steroids. After you get a bit of its health off, Sisyphus will do some work for you and insta-kill the Panopticon. He'll do a monologue just like Minos did, and then kick the shit out of you just like Minos did. Sisyphus is the hardest boss in the game by far, and as I'm writing the script, only a very scarce handful has the bragging rights to say they P-ranked Sisyphus. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching all the way through this vid. I spent a lot of time on just the script alone, as well as having very many distractions. A massive shout out to my friends for keeping me company while I made this. I did have to revise a bit of the script, as well as the way of the world update, releasing two days before I finished the script. But again, thanks to y'all, remember to like and subscribe, it's totally free and it gets me one step closer to my dream of being a YouTuber. See y'all next time.